Python strings are just a variable that is assigned a series of characters between a single, double, or triple quotes. So to create a basic string, we can use this single quote and say, hello. And when we click play, we see that it is a string of hello. We could use double quotes instead. Click play, same thing. And we could use triple quotes as well, which creates the string hello as well. Now the great thing about the triple quotes is that we could use multiple lines here. And we could write hello, this is Python. And when we click play, it creates a string, but of course, the format is a little bit differently. Now, this string contains escape sequences, which is this backslash n here, which represents basically a new line. However, if we want to see those new lines being created, we would need to print that string. And if we print the entire thing, and click play, then we have new lines just like we have it here. And if we add another line, this is a new line and click play again, then it creates a new line, no problem. In Python, you could also combine strings using the plus sign. To do that, we'll combine two strings using that plus sign so let's say we want to print the words Python and we want to combine that with the string programming. And when we click play, it added those two together. Now, if we wanted to create a space between them, we would either have to add a space before here this word or a space after this word, and then we'll create a space between those two words. You can check how long a string is, basically how many characters it has, including spaces, using the len method. So let's create a variable here, which is our word, and we're gonna give that word value, string value of Python. Now, if we want to check the length to see how many characters that word has, then we could print the len of the word. And when we click play, it gives us six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six characters. So it has a length of six. And if we added a space after it, then it has seven because it also includes spaces as well. You can also get specific characters from a string using the bracket notation by using the index. So we have our word Python and we want to get, for example, the first letter in the word Python. So that will be in the index of zero. So to access that, we could use word which is our variable that contains the word Python. And we want to get the first character, which is the index of zero. And when we click play, we get the letter P. And if we wanted to get the next one, which is with a Y, which will be the index of one, and we change that zero to one, and we click play, then we get the letter Y. So we could get individual characters using this bracket index notation. You can also get the last character automatically either by using the five index which will of course give us the last one or we can use the negative one but in this case we had a space here so if we remove this space and only have the entire word and we use negative one again then of course it will give us whatever the last character in that string is. You can also get a range of characters as well. You don't have to get one specific character, but you can also get a range of characters as well. 
So let's say we wanted to get the first three characters of this string. We could use what is called the splice notation. So basically from which index that we want to start and then which index we want to stop at, which will be, for example, three. So we start at zero and we go zero, one, two, and then we no longer include the third index. So it will be PYT. And when we click play, we get PYT. So this gives us the very first three characters of the string. In Python, you can also replace characters within a string. However, it's not very intuitive, maybe at first. If we wanted to use the index bracket notation, we would get an error. So again, we have our word, which is Python. So let's say we wanted to change the first character from P to S. So let's say if we wanted to do something like this word and the first index of word, we want to assign that the value of S instead. If we try doing that, then we get an error. And it's because it doesn't really support this kind of operation of replacing characters. So instead, we have to use the replace method for replacing letters. So instead of using this notation, we would do the dot replace method. And then we want to replace the letter P with the letter S. And when we click play, we can see that it has successfully replaced the word, the character P with the character S. You can also slice the string and then replace it with a different part of a string. So let's go back to our example here and make sure our word is Python again. Then let's say we want to get the first two characters of the word Python. So pi plus we want to add a word program, for example. And then when we put that together, we get pi program. We can also check if a string exists within a string. So let's create a string that has some words in it. So for example, languages equals Python and Java. And we sign that. Now let's say we want to check if the variable languages, which is a long string, contains a specific word Python. So we could do print Python, the string Python in quotes, in languages. So basically we're checking if the string Python exists within the variable languages. And when we click play, we get true. Now let's say if we wanted to, let's say Rust, check if Rust is within that string, we get false because it is not found in here. And again, if we do Java, it finds that within the languages string as well. You can also find the first index of a string if a string matches. So let's use our Java example here. And we, and we want to find where exactly within the string that Java string starts. So we could use the find method. So we use the languages variable and then we use the find method and what exactly that we want to find, that's the word Java. And then when we click play, we get 11. So it will start at the 11th index. So if we go back to this languages variable, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the 11th index, our word Java starts within that string. So that's how we could, that's one way how we could find where a string is located within a string. Strings also have quite a few handy methods that you could check various things as well. 
one of these things is that you could check if all the characters in a string are alphabet characters using the is alpha method. So let's say, let's create a new code here. Let's say we have a word string called word and we want to use the method is alpha. So this checks if all the characters are alphabet characters. And if we click play, that's true. But let's say if we do word three, click play, and it's false. Not all the characters here are alphabetical or are in the alphabet. Another method is, is numeric. So basically it checks if all the characters are numerical. So we could do one, two, three, four, five, and change this to is numeric. And if we click play, it's true. But if we add a letter in front of it, then of course it becomes false. But if we want to check both, if it's both numerical and an alphabet, then we could use is alnum method and click play. And of course that becomes true. You can also remove spaces from the left and right side of a string using the strip method. So let's create a string that has one, two, three, four, five spaces and lots of spaces and one, two, three, four, five. So let's say we want to remove all the spaces from the left and right side. And we use the strip method and, and remove the spaces from the left and right side. If we only wanted it from the right side, then we add an R in front of strips and it becomes R strip and click play. So it only removed from the right side. And of course, if we want to remove from the left side, we use L strip and it remove the spaces from the left side. If you have a list of words, you could convert that into a single string using the join method. So let's create a list where we could just say list of words. And we click play. So we now have a list of three words, list of words. Now, if we want to combine all these into one string, we would use the join method. And to do that, we first provide what exactly we want to separate these strings by. So this will be basically a space. Then we use the join method and into the join method, we provide the list. And when we click play, we have one string that is list of words. And so each word has been combined using a space between each of these words. You could also add, for example, commas, and it will provide commas between each of these words. But if we want a simple string, we could leave it as spaces. Similarly, when we have a string, we could convert that back into a list of words as well. So using this example, let's just copy this. So we have our string, which is a list of words. And to separate this into a list, we would use the split method. And then how are we splitting it? Well, the same way that we combined it together, which is by spaces. So when we click play, we get our original list back separated by the spaces. You can also format the output of your strings using F strings. So for example, let's say we have a string that we are, we wanted to notify what version of Python that you are using. So let's say you are using Python and then normally we will hard code it and it will be three, but let's say we want to format this so that we could provide the version of Python when it changes. So to do this, we would use an F string, which is basically putting an F here in front. And this allows the string to be formatted and we can remove this three and replace it with a version variable. And then before this, we create a version variable and assign it the value three. 
And so now this version will be replaced with this value of three. And when we click play, we get the same thing. We can even change this to in the future for five or Python five, who knows? And it will automatically change this in the string to the value of five. So you could replace different values uh, using this method of f string. You can also use methods such as lower to make all the characters in a string lowercase. So let's create a string with some words and we use the dot lower method. And when we click play, all the characters become lowercase. And similarly, if we want to make uppercase, we will use the upper and then all the characters become uppercase. Become a member at AILearningHub.io and get access to personalized mentor guidance, early access to AI resources, help with AI projects, and a great learning community.